Hey, my name is Christine. Welcome to today's video where we are going to talk about 10 things that my family doesn't buy. Some of these things are the key to how we were able to pay off debt, how we were able to save so much, pay our house off early and prioritize things like vacations and kids activities over some of these standard expenses that a lot of people do that we choose to not do. And if you take one, two, maybe five of these and stop spending money on them, you can probably also accomplish some different financial goals. These days, it seems like the big popular thing is to furnish your house or do home improvement projects. So maybe that's what you wanna do. So let's go over 10 things that my family does not buy. Number one is frozen entrees, meal kits, and pre-cut fruits and vegetables at the store. These would include things like Stouffer's lasagna. And when it comes to the frozen entrees like a Stouffer's lasagna or something like that, they just don't taste as good as a homemade. I enjoyed it when I was about 20, but now that I've made my own several times over the years, it just, it doesn't hold a candle. Something else that could fall under this title would be like a hamburger helper kind of a thing. First of all, don't come at me. This is just my opinion. Hamburger helper is gross. It is gross. It is full of salt, full of artificial blood. Like it doesn't even taste that good. I would much rather just do a jar of sauce and a box of pasta with nothing else on it than have a hamburger helper. Is that weird? Is that just me? And don't even get me started on the tuna helper my husband would throw a fit because he just doesn't like tuna. The package of sliced bell peppers in the produce section of the grocery store for like fajitas and things like that, they're beautiful. They're so tempting to buy. I, even when I walk by them, I'm like, oh, it's so gorgeous. And I look at the price and it's $7 for essentially two bell peppers, which I can purchase myself for $1.50 for a buck and a half. So uh, <laughs> it's not something that I do. And like I've been tempted with the bell peppers, they have those kebab kits, you know what I'm talking about? With like the steak and mushrooms and tomatoes on the skewers just to throw on your grill and you're good to go. They're so pretty. And I look at them and I think all oh, the work is done. This is so amazing. But those dang things cost 15 to $20. When I know that individual ingredients and the 10 minutes of prep would save me probably $15 a meal. Number two is that we do not spend money eating out. If you've been around my channel any length of time that you know that we don't go out to eat almost ever. Of course, over the last year, not many people have gone out to eat but it's something that we just don't do a lot, period. I'm not gonna say never. It's not that we never go out to eat because we have an occasional pizza night for anniversaries and birthdays. We'll tend to go out for a special dinner, but as a weekly event, absolutely not. Part of it might be that I live in a small area that doesn't have really nice restaurants. It's hard to find one that's even tempting. Like I'm not gonna go out to Del Taco unless it's for the Double Del. Now, I don't know why a taco place has a pretty decent burger, which is weird, but likewise, Jack in the Box has a really delicious, like crappy junk food taco. So I don't know what that's about, but the cost of taking, oh my gosh, my whole family. Could you imagine taking six people to Texas Roadhouse and having them all get a dinner? How much is that going to cost? Even if we did the $10 a meal and only got water, which is it's hard to get $10 a meal at Texas Roadhouse, isn't it? It's probably closer to $13 a meal because my kids don't eat off the kids menu anymore. They're all, they all eat more than that. Let's say it's $15 a meal times six people. We're talking $90 before tax and tip. I've just blown $100 on taking my whole family out when I could have spent $100 on taking them to the trampoline park instead, which would be way more fun and something they most likely remember a little bit more than just eating those Texas Roadhouse rolls. Okay, I take that back. Maybe it is worth it to go eat the rolls. <laughs> My question for you today is how much do you spend eating out? Like literally go back over your bills for the last month and calculate out how much you have spent eating out. That includes fast food, that includes restaurants, that includes Domino's takeout, Uber Eats, DoorDash. I don't even know what all of the things are. Calculate it out, figure out the dollar amount and think of what else you could have done with that money instead of going out to eat. We don't spend money on cable and we haven't for a very, very long time. We used to get a deal with Dish Network. Oh, was that 10 years ago? <laughs> Where they run a special promo for $19.99 or something like that. And we would sign up for the promo and the second it would run out, we would say, hey, I wanna cancel. And they'd say, oh no, I wanna keep you. What if I extend out your promo for another year? And I would reply, 
Fantastic, let's do it. But when streaming really became a thing, if you are in the crowd that remembers life before streaming, give this video a thumbs up, thank you very much. Before streaming was a thing, before the Netflix, before the Hulus, <laughs> I heard someone call that, call Hulu Hulu's recently. I thought it was really funny. Before the Amazon Prime, Acorn TV, Apple TV, IMDB TV, which by the way, I've really been enjoying lately. <laughs> I love anything that's free with ads. These days, truly, with the streaming options, it does not make sense to have cable. Not even a little. And when it comes to the streaming services, you can do what we do, alternate between each one so you still keep your expenses low. So let's say you did the Hulu Black Friday deal in 2020 for $1.99 a month for 12 months. You wanna use your Hulu, it's two, it's $2, $2 a month for a year. So you do your whole year, maybe you pause it, and then you're thinking, okay, let's do some Amazon Prime. They've got some good movies right now. That's gonna be $7 a month. We'll do that for six months. And then you'll pause that one and say, you know what, I haven't seen those Disney movies. Pop up the corn, roll the Disney video, because we wanna do that for $7.99 a month, and you do that for six months. So you just keep trading which one that you do so your bills are never, more than 10 bucks a month. And by the way, why is Netflix more than any of those? Everything else is under $10 a month, but Netflix is like up here at $15 a month like they the boss or something. I don't know what that's about. Stat for January 2021 is that the average cable bill is between 51 and $75 a month and you can cut that by a lot and only pay 10 or less unless you do Netflix. We do not buy new cars. It's a common known fact that a new car costs more than an old car, duh, I know. But when you drive a new car, it loses so much of its value in the first year that you drive it. According to Kelly Blue Book, the average cost, average cost of new cars right now in 2021 is $37,000. $37,000 is the average cost of a new car. And that will take your more expensive cars like a brand new Suburban down to your less expensive cars like a Honda Fit. The information and data shows that a new car will lose approximately 20% of its value in the first year. And for the first five years of its life, it will lose between 15 to 25% of its value every single year until you hit five years. Once you hit five years, it has lost 60% of its value. And at that point, the value loss percentage goes down significantly. So when we buy cars, we buy cars that are five years old or older. So we don't have to pay for the loss in value. Cars are a liability. They are depreciating, which means they are not an asset. They do not make you money. They lose you money. And so that's not something I want to put a lot of my money into. In fact, let's take a look at the new car that I just, new car that I just purchased about a month ago. We have three cars. Um, we have a RAV4, which is what Haley drives. It's like the kid car these days. It basically doesn't belong to us anymore as she is driving to school, tennis practice, volleyball practice. It's gone a lot of the time. Number two is is our Suburban, it's our family car. It's the one car that fits everyone really well for road trips and if Dave needs to drive to work because of rain or snow. Otherwise, he rides his bike to work. So I needed a car that was like a smaller run around car that could also fit my entire family and handle the very snowy and cold climate of Idaho. I got a Honda Pilot. Just for funsies, I decided to look up a 2021 Honda Pilot. Now, my Pilot has leather and heated seats, Bluetooth, and all that stuff, even though it's a 2012. It had fairly low miles, really good shape, and had all of the major maintenance done that needs to be done. A brand new Honda Pilot starts at $32,000, and if you get all of the add-ons that mine actually has, you're looking at closer to forty-five dollars to $50,000 for that car. I paid about a fifth of that amount. Now, obviously mine's gonna lose its value as well, but Hondas are well known for their longevity. I drove a Honda Odyssey all the way up to 210,000 miles and it still worked like a charm when I sold it. I am not worried about getting one with a few more miles on it. They're easy to fix, they're cheap to fix because they're so common. I saved a ton of money by buying a used one. Moral of the story, New cars is not something that we buy, probably won't ever buy, just because of the high expense. Next is haircuts, and you might be <laughs> thinking, but Christine, you get your haircut all the time. Uh, yes and no, I don't get my hair cut all the time. I get it cut about every four to five months. I'm like the only person. Haley has beautiful hair. She has the hair I always wanted. It's sleek and 
thick and not frizzy at all and air dries beautifully. I don't have that hair. <laughs> My three sons and my husband, we cut all of their hair at home. We invested in a, a set of clippers. Well, we used the same set for like 15 years. We just bought a new set for $30. <laughs> we cut all of their hair about every two to three weeks here at the house. And I actually have a little bit of skill when it comes to cutting women's hair. I cut my sister's hair, I cut my niece's hair, and I trim Haley's hair sometimes because they have such different hair than me. There's no way I'm trust trusting my husband to cut my hair. <laughs> To get it looking like this, I washed it three days ago. It has <laughs> leave-in conditioner, a wax sealing, and it's been straightened with a flat iron, and it's had two days to settle down on the frizz. While I do get my hair cut, the other five people in my family do not. Especially if you have boys, get some clippers, check out some YouTube videos. It's actually not that hard, and you'll get better and better at it as you practice. Along the line with haircuts, let's talk about mani pedis or the lack thereof. Uh, we do not do this. I have gone to get a pedicure a couple of times, but it's always for a wedding or if someone else is paying for it, like my mom. If my mom's like, oh, I wanna get a pedicure, I'll pay for you if you come with me. I'm like, yes, I will come with you, but it is definitely not something I pay for on my own. I have a couple of colors. I have some Essie nail polish. I have some OPI nail polish. Haley has the gel nail set with the UV light and everything. She got that for her birthday when she turned 16. It's definitely possible to get a nice look at home because while I enjoy a mani-pedi, it is a lot of money. And I don't know about you, but I haven't been to one of those places in over a year, right? The average cost of a pedicure is $35 to $60, which is a hefty amount. I think I would rather spend the $60 on all the pretty nail polish and then do it myself for a lot longer. So far, we have not paid for fancy vacations. And before you jump in and say, but Christine, you went to Mexico, you went to the Dominican Republic, you went sailing in the Caribbean. You're right, I did do all of those things. And I have videos on all of those items. I'll leave them down below low because they're some of my favorite videos I've ever made. And if you want to see, <laughs> if you want to see the video of me trying to do the exchange rate from American dollars to pesos, it's one of my favorite videos because I'm such a dummy. <laughs> My method of doing that was totally ridiculous. But what I did for those vacations, I shared with you guys. I showed you exactly how I did all of those vacations on a budget. You're definitely not gonna see us do a Disney cruise. Not only because cruises aren't going right now, I imagine they will go again eventually, but a Disney cruise for a family of six could be over $10,000. And you're not seeing me take vacations like that. I do like to travel. I do like to see the world and what it has to offer. And I would love to take my kids with me, but you're always gonna see me find a way to get the airline tickets for free by using credit card rewards. You're gonna see me try and do excursions on my own to save a few dollars, order water instead of drinks, or a variety of other budget saving techniques to be able to travel on a budget. I have tried, <laughs> okay, before 2020 hit, I tried to figure out a Disney World vacation for my family of six on a budget. I researched heavily to figure out how I could do it, how cheaply I could do it, and I could never get it cheaper than $6,000 for my family, not ever. And that was going cheap as cheap as cheap, staying with my aunt who lives in Orlando with the plane tickets to get there. I, I could not get it cheaper than $6,000. I thought about that and I said to myself, I could take my family of six basically anywhere else in the world for the cost of Disney World. And that's when I decided we weren't gonna go to Disney World. I'm not gonna say never, maybe I'll do it one day, but I'd rather take my kids to Mexico or Hawaii, Machu Picchu or whatever is gonna be open in the next few years. I would rather do that than go to Disney World and wait in line. Have you ever seen Jim Gaffigan's <laughs> bit on Disney World. He's like, I pay all this money to stand in line for two hours to see a picture of Dumbo at the end of the line. Anyway, I've been to Disney World. I like it, but there is a lot of waiting around, right? <laughs> pay a lot of money to just wait around. Next up is a gym membership. And this one has changed in the last four months only. Let me go back and do the rest of the time. We never paid for a gym membership. Number one, we didn't live close to one. Number two, we didn't have any money. Since we've lived in Idaho for the past seven years, we've been able to use gyms for free with the following methods. Number one, we were able to use the university gym up until 2020 because Dave works there. Him and I get to use it for free as a, an employee and an employee spouse. So that was amazing. And then I realized my local gym would give me and my husband and my daughter a free gym membership in exchange for teaching a spinning class once a week. I have been doing that for five years. 
My little gym also will give you a free membership if you work in their little daycare center. Drop the kid off for up to 90 minutes to go work out and it's part of your membership. Well, the ladies that work in the little daycare area, they'll do maybe an hour or two hours a week without getting paid in exchange for a gym membership. So that's a way of getting a gym membership for nothing. Of course, you have your gyms that are relatively inexpensive. I think our regular gym, the regular price is 20 bucks a month, which is not that much. And if you watch your streaming bills, you can do that. We have not paid for a gym membership until four months ago. I decided I was dealing with a little bit of 2020 sadness and I needed a goal, something new to be exciting to me. So I joined the local CrossFit gym. I'm doing that also on a budget because I chose the three day a week membership instead of the full fledged membership, which is half the cost. Another way you could do that is I could become certified to be a coach. I'm not yet, but the coaches get a free membership also if they coach like one class a week. That potentially is one that I could also do for free. Something else to mention is you can always just go outside, which is what I did when we lived in Texas. I would go run, go for walks, take hikes, take out my road bike, do all my exercise outside in the sunshine. Here in Idaho, that's a lot harder when there's snow on the roads for six months of the year. In fact, it snowed yesterday, so that's awesome. While I might fail that one today, <laughs> six months ago, it was definitely a, I never pay for gym memberships kind of a thing. This one is, I feel going to be very controversial, but we do not pay for Starbucks. <laughs> And maybe that's not fair because we don't drink coffee. I actually don't like it. Like, I don't like the smell of it. It smells very gross to me. Also, we don't have one here. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know that there's a Starbucks. Okay, I gotta look it up. How close is the closest Starbucks? Hang on. Oh, snap, they have one 30 miles away. I didn't even know. The average price of a Starbucks drink is 275, which doesn't sound too bad. Like I said, I don't drink coffee, so I don't know. But let's just say going out for drinks is not something that we do, whether it's a Jamba Juice smoothie or a Starbucks coffee, an all natural squeezed juice or whatever it is. Number one, we typically don't drink our calories. Number two, we really only drink water. And number three, they can add up a lot. So let's say you do the 275. So let's round it up to three bucks, okay? And you go out five days a week. That's $15 a week. That's $60 a month on drinks. Now, like I said in a video on my other channel about when it's okay to splurge on stuff, if all of your buckets are filled and you want to spend that $60 a month on Starbucks because you love it and it's your thing, no judgment here whatsoever. But I know that if you are trying to be a little tighter with your money, that 60 bucks could go towards an electric bill. It could pay for a cell phone. It could sign your kid up for soccer for the season. In the past, I've always had to make decisions based on does this thing impede the progress over here? So listen, Jen, if you like your Starbucks and you wanna keep drinking it, you won't hear a peep from me. It's just not something that I do. <laughs> and if you wanna take me to Starbucks to get something, I'll probably just get a brownie. <laughs> Last but not least, name brand clothes. And I feel like this one needs a disclaimer because first of all, <laughs> there were many, many years where I didn't buy clothes. This was literally what I had. I had like two pairs of jeans that were a hand-me-down from a neighbor. I don't even know what shirts I wore. You know, um, you know, back when Gap had, I haven't been to a Gap in like five years, so I don't know if they still have this, but you know, Gap would have their fitted cotton shirts or cotton spandex shirts for like $5 or something. I would get a couple, like five of those in different colors. And that's what I wore every single day, every single day as a stay at home mom. And you know what? Some days I didn't even put on jeans. I just stayed in my jammies all day. And on those days when Dave came home and found the half eaten bag of Twizzlers in the kitchen cabinet that I was hoping I was going to hide from him. And he'd look at me and say, rough day, huh? <laughs> so it was a truly a very, very long time before we started spending any money on clothes whatsoever. But something that we've done lately is while we still look for deals, shopping for clothes in my area is very difficult because we have Walmart, which our Walmart is a little small for the size of our town and they're out of a lot of stuff all the time. In fact, listen to this. I went there yesterday to buy some more True Lemon because it was on Ibotta. They're gone. The Mio, the Crystal Light, the True Lemon, gone. The whole shelf was empty. And I even asked some of the workers, I was like, did you guys move your blah, blah, blah? And they were like, oh, it's by the juice. And I was like, no, it isn't. It was just there. They were like, oh, it's by the soda. And I was like, no, it isn't. I was also just there. I mean, what does name brand even mean? Does it mean Old Navy? Does it mean stuff from JCPenney? Does it mean Chanel? What does name brand mean to you? Everything has a name brand on it. So the question is, are you gonna buy it on sale? Are you gonna get it at Goodwill? Are you gonna use a gift card? Or 
are you gonna pay full price? Because that is not something that I'm okay with. Don't pay full price for this stuff. You can always wait until the end of the season and get it on sale and you can get the name brand stuff, which a lot of the time is gonna last longer. You can get it on Poshmark. You can get it on Mercari. I have found some awesome deals at garage sales for pennies. Now my thrift stores in my area are no good when it comes to clothes, like no good, horrible. They're ripped, they're stained, they're pilled, and they're still charging like $5. But the point is we don't go into Dillard's and say, oh, those shoes are excellent. I'm gonna buy those, $150, sweet. Put them in my bag, wrap them up. If I find them, I'm gonna go look online. I'm gonna see if there's a coupon code. A deal, is there, can I redeem some Ibotta rewards for a gift card for Dillard's and then buy the thing that I want? It's not that I don't buy name brands. It's that I buy name brands creatively so I can save money and still have them. <laughs> Tell me down below out of this list of 10 items, what things do you not buy or what things do you say, screw that crap, I am buying it because I love it. I would love to hear from you. So tell me down below what you like, what you think maybe shouldn't be on the list at all. What does your personal list look like? And if you enjoyed this video and you wanna see other things that I do on my channel, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss when I publish a video or when I go live. I'm gonna be doing a live stream cook with me this month in April, it's gonna be really fun. And if you wanna talk more money, check out my second channel, Christine Unfiltered. I will leave the link down below in the description box. And that's it for me today. See ya.